everybody. We want to make sure that you're all set up for our next lion side chat. Welcome. We're going to get started in a minute or less. Go ahead and make sure your devices are all set up. We would like to welcome you today to our Lionside Chat. My name is Sonia De La Cueto. I'm one of the Lionside Chat moderators alongside of Dr. Ryan Hassler and Professor Don Pfeiffer Bryce. Come on in and welcome to our campus. We're so glad you could join us. Before we get started, we wanted to show that you should please feel free to submit questions, okay, throughout our presentation today. Um, our series today is going to be focusing on our FYS We Are series, We Are Somebody. So Becky Eckenrode and some of our best Penn State Park students are here to join us. And we're going to facilitate a student panel. So now I am going to hand the reins over to Becky Eckenrode, our Associate Director of Admissions here at Penn State Park. Good luck, everybody. Thank you so much, Sonia. My name is Becky Eckenrode, I'm the Associate Director of Admissions, and we're so happy that you could be participating with us today, and we want to encourage questions. So if you do see that Q&A button on the bottom of your screen, please utilize it. If anybody says something that you want to ask or get more information on, please just utilize that Q&A at the bottom of the screen. Um, I'm going to be um, being the going to be the moderator today. And um, what that means is I'll be asking some questions of our current students. And with us today, I will have them all introduce themselves um, before we get started. And all of them have decided to stay at Penn State Berks for all four years. So they're going to talk to you a little bit about their story and their journey as far as why and how they decided to um, decide to stay at Penn State Berks. So to start us off, I am going to have Janique Jules tell us your name, your year, your major, and where you're from. Okay, hi everyone, my name is Janique. Um, I'm currently a junior here at Penn State Berks. Um, I'm a dual major in the digital media and professional writing degree, um, and then also in the political science degree, which I'm doing through World Campus, um, which you'll find more <laughs> out about later. Um, and I'm originally from Piscataway, New Jersey, which is in Central Jersey. Thanks, Janique. And next up, Tyler. Hi everyone, my name is Tyler. Um, I'm a junior here at Penn State Berks. I major in kinesiology and um, I'm from a small town right outside of Quaker Town called Pennsburg. Thank you, Tyler. Um, next up, Adam. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Adam Verzina. I am a second year hospitality management major from Birdsboro, Pennsylvania, which is about like 20 minutes away from campus. Thanks, Adam. And next, Ife. Hi everyone, my name is Ife Luang Glinka, but I go by Ife. I'm a senior majoring in global studies and minoring in communication arts and science. And I'm originally from Nigeria, but my family lives in Philadelphia now. Thank you, Ife. And next, Allison. Hey guys, my name is Allison Holder. I am currently a junior biochemistry major taking the molecular biology option. I am originally from the Dominican Republic, but I moved to the US and I currently live in Roselle, New Jersey. Excellent. Thank you, Allison. And last but not least, Sammy. Hi guys, um, my name is Sammy Oxenrider. I am a second year elementary education major with a minor in special ed. And I'm from a small town, like 20 minutes from campus. That's Robazonia, Pennsylvania. Excellent. It was so nice to hear about um, where you're from and your majors currently. But what we want to know next is why did you choose Penn State Berks? There are 20 different campuses in Penn State, um, different sizes, things like that. Why did you choose Penn State Berks? 
So let's go again in that same order with starting with Janique. So yeah, so um, I always wanted to go to Penn State in general. Um, when I was doing my research for colleges, Penn State was on like the top of my list. I knew I wanted to get out of state, but I didn't want to go too far away. Um, and I wanted to go to a Big Ten school. Um, so I applied to Penn State and when applying to Penn State, I did not know that there were 23 campuses. Um, I didn't know that you could have that many campuses within a like system because I live next to Rutgers and there's only three campuses with Rutgers. So I was expecting it to be like three or four. Um, so then I did my research and um, I was trying to figure out what the best campus was, um, the best Commonwealth campus, because I knew I didn't want to start up at UP um, because I went to a smaller school. Um, but I had intentions of going up to UP my junior year. Um, so after doing a lot of research and seeing, you know, what's the best campuses as far as student teacher ratio, things like that, um, Berks was one of the top campuses. So I applied and um, Berks was actually the only college campus that I actually toured um, before college. I didn't even tour Rutgers and Rutgers is like two minutes away from me. Um, and then just like that, I told my mom, I was like, I think this is a school and then I came to Berks and now I'm a junior here. Um, so yeah. Great, thank you, Janique. Uh, next, Tyler, you have a little bit of a unique story, right? Yeah, so I'm actually just about the complete opposite of Janique. Um, out, coming out of high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I ended up going to the community college local to me, uh, Montgomery County, and I switched majors, I think twice there. I ended up with exercise science and I decided two weeks before my graduation at Monco that I would like to go back to college. So my dream school when I was a kid was always Penn State, but I've always been a person who likes um, community and smaller groups. I, I didn't like the 30,000 students at Penn State. It was very intimidating. So once I found out about um, Commonwealth campuses and, you know, that I can stay all four years or however long it would have taken me, I jumped on the opportunity and submitted my application, I think, a week after I graduated um, from Monco and I got accepted in, I think, three days. So I've been here ever since. And I mean, this is the place where I kind of grew as a person, not, you know, just yeah, I mean, yeah, that's about it, honestly. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Tyler. Uh, next, Adam. So my story is also a little fun. So in my senior year of high school, I was actually set to go to a school in Florida. And I decided in late April that that was not the decision for me. And I didn't apply anywhere local. So I had to scramble with my college um, counselor who was a gracious man and helped me find a place to go in two weeks while uh, graduation was approaching. Um, I went and toured a couple local colleges and when I toured Penn State Berks it was really just it just that was it. I looked I remember looking at my dad right after the tour and I just looked at him I'm like this is it this is the place we're going but yeah <laughs> that's how I decided to go to Penn State Berks. <laughs> Ife. So my college journey kind of started in South Africa. That was, I was supposed to go to the University of Johannesburg and visited. In fact, the day that I left, that I arrived in the United States, my RA was like, where are you? Everyone is here and you're not here. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I deferred. I'm not, I'm not coming this year. Um, and I'm also like Adam, like I decided I'm not going back there and I just kind of had to scramble last minute. And Funny enough, I like to think Berks chose me because I, so University of Johannesburg is a huge campus in South Africa. I plan to go to like a huge like campus. So it was like kind of a scramble to find somewhere to go. And my mom was like, yeah, let's just like look at like colleges. And I came to Berks on like three tours and it wasn't intentional. I just made the mistake of signing up for three tours at Berks. And I just like end up here and I'm like, I've been here already. Um, and that, that was kind of like a sign for me, but still I was like, you know what, after like one semester, I'm gonna go up to UP. That's what I was telling my friends back then. And now we're six, seven semesters down the line and I'm still here. I've just like found the community that I didn't know existed. Um, so why, why, do I, why would I wanna leave that, you know? Yeah. 
Allison. So mine's a little similar to Ife. So I moved to the U.S. Um, when I was just about to start high school. So I went from a system where you typically go to the college where you, you're close by and you can afford and to a whole college application process where a school has to accept you and all these things. And I really didn't know where I wanted to go because I sort of only knew like big like Ivy Leagues and stuff. And I was like, oh, I don't know about that. So I heard about Penn State during a college fair at my high school. And I was like, oh, Penn State sounds, you know, interesting as a major I'm looking for. And over the summer, I had spoken to my uncle who lives here in Reading. And he was like, Penn State, that sounds really familiar. There's a campus right by here that's um, Penn State Berks. And I was like, eh, really? I don't really want to live close to you. Like, I don't. <laughs> But my mom was like, I love that idea because University Park's a little far from New Jersey. And my mom was like, ah, you're, that's too far away from me. And I was like, that's far enough for me. But <laughs> I had decided, I was like, you know what, whatever. I'm just going to go on this tour to Penn State Berks with my mom to please her so she can see like, it's not my style. I'm, Unfortunately for me at that time, but fortunately for me now, because I'm doing great here and all this stuff, um, it was my style. It, it was everything I needed and more. Like it had the research opportunities I was looking for since I wanted to apply to med school. And it had that small community feel because I went to Catholic school my entire life and Catholic schools aren't necessarily big college campuses or big high schools. So it sort of was a match made in heaven and I don't regret it at all. Thank you, Allison and Sammy. Okay, so my Penn State experience has kind of been different. So I had zero intentions of going to Penn State when I was in high school. I had my heart set on Kutztown and I ended up doing a visit to Kutztown. And there was just something about it that didn't click with me. Um, the student leaders, I felt like didn't really mesh together as one group. I felt it was really divided and there were cliques and coming from like a school where cliques were the main thing, I really didn't want that. So my mom was like, you should visit Penn State Berks. Like you could go do that and then go to Maine and all this. And I was like, meh, but I did it anyway. Cause I was like, could sound kind of let me down. And right as I got to Berks, I like, I felt that community. And I think I told this story a million times, but like watching the Lion Ambassadors on campus and how they're like a community and they were all laughing and talking as one and all that, I just fell in love with the campus. And I was like, yeah, okay, we can do this. And um, I'm the first in my family to go to college. So I really didn't know much about it. And even when I was in the admissions process, people were helping me left and right. So I was like, yeah, Berks is the place for me. <laughs> That's so good to hear from the admissions end, yay. <laughs> um, and I, it's funny because I do remember some of your names coming through the admissions process. So for me, this is like a full circle moment um, where we, I get to see you now um, as student leaders at Penn State Berks. Now, it sounds like a lot of you, Berks was not your first choice to begin with. How did you decide to stay at Berks? when you weren't even sure this was where you wanted to start. So again, we're gonna go in the same order. So Janique. All right, so mine is a little bit of a story, but I'll keep it pretty concise for you guys. But so, like I said, my other major is political science and Berks does not have a political science major. They only have the minor. Um, and I knew that because of what I wanted to do, like I wanted to major in political science. Um, I wanted to dual major since like, freshman year of high school. So I was like, even if I give up on my journalism major, I'm not giving up on the political science major. Like that was like a, a no brainer. So I came to Berks, we found out there was no political science major. And I was like, okay, well, what am I gonna do? Um, I was gonna go up to UP anyways. So I was like, whatever, like I'll do my first two years at Berks and then I'm going up to UP, like I'm ready for UP life, blah, blah, blah. So going into sophomore year, I was like, okay, like this is gonna be like my senior year at Berks. Like I'm prepared to go up. Like uh, my friends don't, don't get any closer with me because it's gonna make this decision a lot harder. Um, and then I went up to UP for um, a few football games because I'm a big football person. I love Penn State football. Um, and it was really fun, um, but that's when I kind of realized that maybe UP wasn't for me. Um, it is 
a lot bigger. And sometimes you don't really think about that going from a um, smaller school or a smaller campus to a campus like University Park. Um, and I just sat back and I was starting to have like, I was getting scared about going up. Um, and I'm not usually like a fearful person when it comes to me doing things. Um, but I was getting scared about if I wanted to go up or not. So I went to Becky's office a lot, cried to her a lot, trying to figure out what I was going to do. Um, and Becky told me, she was like, when the decision comes, you're just going to feel it. Like you're going to know what your decision is right then and there. And literally right after I left her office, I was walking back to my dorm and I felt it. I was like, I'm not going up to University Park. Like I, I can't do it. So that next day I emailed um, the undergraduate advisors here at Berks who are amazing. Um, and I was trying to figure out, okay, well, what am I gonna do to be able to stay here all four years? Um, because they don't have my major here and I'm gonna be out of luck if I can't figure out a way. Um, so my mom was like, well, you can utilize that your school is one of the only schools um, in the like country to have so many campuses. Like maybe they'll be able to figure something out. So me and one of the undergraduate advisors called to University Park. Um, we actually talked to the World Campus Department. World Campus is our um, online campus. And we were like, so I'm trying to major in one thing and I have a minor here at Berks, but I wanna get my political science degree. Is there anything I can do? Is there a way that I can stay at Berks and then um, complete my degree, things like that. And they were like, I don't think so. I, I have never heard anyone say this to me before. So then we were like, okay, well, can you ask the higher ups? Um, and long story short, they were able to figure something out for me to do both. So I'm technically enrolled in two different campuses um, at once, but I'm still at Berks. Um, so that's kind of what sealed the deal for me, um, especially because the Berks teachers and professors and advisors, they really want to make sure you get the most out of all four years. Um, and that comes with the smallness of the campus, you know, there's not as many kids, so you can have a one-on-one -on -one connection. I um, mean, that's something that I really value because I wanted to get the most that I could out of my education. Um, so yeah, that's my little anecdote about how I ended up here. Excellent, thank you, Janique. Um, move on to Tyler. So um, yeah, like I said uh, before, I personally didn't want to go to UP like my goal was to actually go to a Commonwealth campus and just stay um I chose Berks in specific because I think it's the closest to my house I think it's the, actually the second closest campus to my house and the first is Lehigh Valley which you can't dorm at and I really did want like the dorming like the actual real college experience so I chose Berks and another reason why I chose Berks was my little brother actually goes here. He has gone here. He's actually a senior right now. So he'll be he'll be graduating next fall, but uh, definitely the family aspect. And now my other little brother, um, Ty is actually also a freshman this year. So we're kind of trying to run it in the family, Penn State Berks. So I think that was a big part of it. That tends to be a tradition, that family tradition. Once one starts at Berks and they all seem to just kind of follow, it's kind of awesome. <laughs> I've known lots of siblings um, in my, my years at Penn State Berks. Um, next up, Adam, can you share why you chose to stay at Berks? Well, as I said earlier, uh, my decision to go to Berks was a bit of a scramble. So the summer and my first year being at Berks, I got asked a million times, oh, are you doing the two plus two? Is that why you're at Berks? Like, and at that time I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing yet. And it was really this past summer when I really just like sat down and I'm like, me going to U Park, I would lose the community that I've built here and the friends that I have built here at Berks. So there's no, like, I would rather stay here and keep the community and stay at Berks and just stay at home rather than go up to U Park and have to redo it all over again. So that's my reason. Thank you, Adam and Ife. Um, first off, Tyler, I don't know how you can like whatever magic you're using to like get your siblings because I'm always advocating for Berks and like my siblings are like, you're there. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's my family. Um, but yeah, I think very similar to everyone's just has really been the community. Like Janique, I went up to University Park for one of the Link UP events that um, they host on campus, which lets 
students at um, Berks or other campuses go up to UP and like a tour for like the majors and things like that. So I got to talk with like people there and see them. And I just, it kind of hit me that like, I really, I'm someone who likes to be involved in a lot of things and there's too many things that I can't do at UP. And I think that would have just killed me. And then having to start over as a junior and like, I don't know, I just, I didn't want to start all over. And I also found like such a good community here. So I didn't want to leave either. Great, Allison. So my decision happened halfway through my freshman year. I had been debating. I was like, I don't know if I want to stay here all four years or go up to UP in the next two. But um, what actually like kind of made me decide, yes, this is where I want to like finish my my undergrad and do like keep it here at Berks was actually the friendships I made. Um, I'm a big, a big believer that um, friendship and like family and community and stuff like that are very important. So I made some great, amazing friends who I currently live with actually. But um, I also had, like like Yifei said, I felt settled. I felt established even halfway through my freshman year where I had so many opportunities. I managed to get research. I started working at the library and I was like, do I really want to hit restart and figure all of this out all over again by going up to UP. And unfortunately, very fortunately, my major, I can finish it here. So I was like, it's a no brainer. I should stay here and finish my degree here. Thank you, Allison and Sammy. Okay, so there's actually like two main reasons I chose to stay at Berks that are the biggest ones that I think are most important to talk about. And um, I only made my decision this summer. It was a very long decision to make, but I'm very happy with it. So I was pretty dead set on two plus two. And for me, what it was, was the community aspect of Berks. Um, we don't just say we're a family, like we truly are a family. Everybody's so sweet on Berks. And it's just that community feel everywhere you go. And I see head nodding. So like <laughs> at all the students, I agree, I think agree with that. Um, so with that family feel and community, I got involved with a lot of activities recently that I'm a part of. And I just, I kept asking myself, how can I lead these people? Like everybody's so sweet at Brooks and so outgoing and I've made so many friends. So I just kept thinking like, how can I lose these beautiful memories I'm making? Like, I don't want it to end. And something that has to do with that too is like the Lion Ambassadors. When I, when I got in, they had like, you know, this video to say bye to all the Lion Ambassadors. And I kept thinking like, I don't want that to, for me. Like, I wanna be with them this whole time. I don't wanna have to say goodbye as soon as I would have to. And the other reason kind of going off of that is she's on this call, actually Becky. Um, you're actually a huge reason I'm staying at Berks because um, she's amazing and has been there for me through everything. And I definitely would have crashed and burned way long ago in college if it wasn't for her, like moral support, everything. So I just kept thinking, how can I leave this, like somebody who I'm so close to and love working with. So um, yeah, Becky's the best. So I was just like, I can't leave her. Like there's nobody that will compare to her up at Maine. So I, I can't go. So yeah, then I decided to stay and I'm so happy with my decision because of everybody, the community and not just Becky, like all faculty members, every all the faculty members at Berks just care so much about us and I don't wanna lose that. Thank you, Sam, I'm crying now. Um, <laughs> you guys are, are super special and I, I, I love you all. Um, as student leaders, you are all my line ambassadors and you know you're part of part of my extended family. Um, and it actually kind of goes into the next question I was gonna ask, and it's gonna sound like I'm trying to like toot my own horn here, but I and I please don't say me. Um, but has there been an individual, whether it's a current student, um, a, a student who has graduated, who has impacted your decision, whether it's um a faculty member or staff member, feel free to name drop. Okay, so let, let's let's hear why you chose to stay and who impacted, who helped impact this decision. So Janique. So Becky, you're gonna kill me, but it is you. <laughs> um, 
Um, so like I said, like I had this conversation with Becky about what I wanted to do. Um, but Becky was telling me about her undergrad experience and how she was dealing with the same thing of figuring out if she wanted to go up or not. And I saw a lot of the things that she was talking about um, related a lot to my story and um, just the line ambassadors organization as a whole. Um, I feel like, you know, I always treat admissions as like, I always tell people as my own personal therapist, um, I would go to them on like rough days and talk and they really are always trying to make sure that you're doing the best that you can and that you feel the best that you can. And that's something, especially as an out-of-state student, um, I hit a really rough patch where I just kind of felt like not alone because I had amazing friends like Allison, but like I wasn't home and I didn't have like the adult mentor more or less. Um, even though we're all adults, you know, there's a big difference between someone who's going, I was 17 when I went into college. So someone who's 17 versus a person who's working, you know, it's, it's a big age difference. So um, they really helped me as far as when I was feeling really alone and stuff like that. And I didn't really know where to go. Um, admissions and Becky and a lot of my professors were really helpful. Um, and they just wanted to make sure that, you know, I was doing the best that I could do and I was feeling the best that I could. So yeah, definitely. But for sure to name drop, it would definitely be Becky. <laughs> um, Tyler. As much as I would love to say Becky, I will switch it up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I actually do have a few students in mind. Um, first off, my brother and um, a friend of mine, Alex, we call him Stein. Um, those two kind of helped me still have a piece of home away from home. So I thank them both for that, both being here with me. And the one student that like really wanted me to, you know, get involved and become more of my own person is Zach Guthrie. I'm sure all of you know him. Zach is one of the most genuine, caring, lovable people I've ever met in my life. And if I never met Zach. I don't think I would be where I'm at today. Um, he, you know, as much as, and I know Zach hates me right now for saying all of this because he's just Zach, but um, yeah, like on, I, I give him a lot of credit for trying to break me of my shell. I know that I'm nothing like my brother who is very, you know, um, reserved and he doesn't do much of this, but I, I really needed that, that little push. So I, I credit Zach for uh, for that. Zach, our homecoming king. Yay. <laughs> um, Adam. I have a lot of people who I could credit, so I'm just going to give a highlight of a couple. Um, mainly, I have to thank uh, my closest friends for helping me make this make the decision to stay. Um, even though, ironically, they're all going to go to U Park by the end of the spring, um, they really just helped me discover who I am and like help me assert myself and assert what I want. And what I wanted was to stay. So they respected that decision. They helped me make that decision, come to that decision. So my friends were really helpful in that sense. Also, all the professors in the hospitality department itself. Um, we are a small, smaller department here at Berks, so I've gotten really close with a lot of the professors there, um, and they have just helped me um, academically and personally get through a lot of things, um, and they're part of the reason why I really love hospitality in general. Um, outside of that, um, Becky and um, Autumn Fritz have also helped me um, just get more involved in campus and helped me really be the leader that they saw in me. Thank you, Adam, except you weren't supposed to tell, say my name, but thank you. <laughs> Ife. I think I have so many people to thank um, for my decision to staying at Berks. Um, the Lion Ambassadors is one organization um, the Christian Students Fellowship is also like a big reason. Like there's another Christian Students Fellowship at University Park, but like the people in this one, the leadership has just been like a big reason why I've stayed. 
And then basically all of my professors in global studies, especially in my core classes, um, as well as Dr. Um, Cheryl Nicholas, Dr. Curran Schaefer, um, Dr. Randall Newnham, although he and I don't have the same interests, but like he's also been a, like his classes have been like one of the reasons why I've stayed. They're pretty challenging, but he's also one of the reasons. Dr. Holly Ryan, who I work with in the Writing Center, she has been like a, a rock as well. Dr. Sandy Feinstein, she's pushed me more than anyone has ever pushed me. And it drives me, makes me really upset most of the time, but it's also like, I really want it to be challenged in college. And she's been someone who's been challenging to work with and been a challenger as well. Um, and yeah, those have, and also all of my friends that I've had um, here at Berks, they've just been like, I didn't want to leave them. Um, so those are, that's just like the quick, like, um, yeah. And also Taj Morales. I also want to point out Taj. Taj and I started together in um, freshman year and we, we've been through like a lot of classes that have been challenging together. So it's always just been like someone that is going through it with me, someone with similar life goals that I've just like, we've been like on this different paths in life, but like walking parallel and it's, yeah. Thank you, Ife. Allison. So while I would love to give all the credit to my very dear close friends, um, there was actually a faculty member um, who really played a big role in my decisions to stay here. Um, shout out to Dr. Shannon Nowatarski. Love you, Dr. N, you're the great. Um, so she really, I started off um, in spring of my freshman year, I was looking for research and I was throwing out emails to any biochemistry professor that would take me. And I met with Dr. N and we talked and I thought I was like, if you take me, like, I feel like you're a good fit for me and I feel like I'm a good fit for you. And it was like, an instant connection of mentorship. She has guided me through so much, both my undergrad career here and my future medical career, like for medical school. And she's just, I've went to her office countless of times just to like decompress of all the classes I'm taking and find out like what she thinks would be a better decision. So if I had to credit uh, someone and give like name drop, it'd be Dr. N. Thank you, Allison. And Sammy, someone beside me, please. Yeah, so um, I know I talked about Becky, obviously, and Lion Ambassador, but the other ones who helped me kind of understand my future and what I wanted to do were um, my best friends, and they're currently sitting on the couch eating pizza, so they can hear this, but uh, <laughs> I am with them 24-7. I have texted them hours and hours about staying at Berks and what to do. But really, I owe a lot of it to them because I met them at the beginning of freshman year and we've grown so close since then. And they really are my sisters. I never had sisters, so they're my sisters. And again, it was one of those things where I just kept asking myself, like even during quarantine when I didn't get to see them and it was terrible because I missed them. I was like, how am I going to go to University Park without these people? And how, am, how are we going to break up this little family? And so they talked to me for so long about it and they really helped me figure out who I am as a person and who I am as a leader, like who I wanna be all around. So I owe a lot of the Sammy I am today to them. Um, so yeah, they were a huge, huge impact. Awesome, thank you, Sammy. And we have a question in the Q&A. Um, since you guys are all student leaders, you're all very involved. Some of you are double majoring. Some of you have a lot on your plate. There's a question about stress. What is the best way to handle stress and all the overlapping deadlines of all the assignments? Is there one particular one of you who feels more comfortable answering this question? If you want to just raise your hand. So Tyler, go ahead. So um, personally, I understand this completely. Uh, last spring, I took 24 credits. Um, I was in THON. I was also, I also had a job at um, our local eatery, um, Tully's, and was balancing all of that um, at one time. And it was tough. I, I will admit it, it was not, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. But um, the biggest thing that I can say is definitely time management. If you, you have to know what is due at all times, like write it down over and over and over and over again, if you need to. 
but like I was always, I've never, I never turned anything in late, luckily, but um, it's just all time management. You need to know what's due at what time and how much time, like plan out your day. How much time will I have after this class to finish this? And how much time will I have to finish this? So yeah, I think, I think a lot of it is, is just knowing what you have to do, not looking at the huge big picture of it. Thank you, Tyler. Ife, did you have something else that you wanted to, to share? Yeah, I want to say if you're, it gets a little easier when you're getting more into your major because then you get start getting the same professors and you kind of know how they work. So I chuck everything down into like patterns and then breaking out stuff into like small bits. So for one class, I know if there's like a huge assignment coming up at the end of the semester, I have to, first I have to read the assignment to know if I can do it in two hours or if I need 24 hours. Um, you really need to like read like your syllabus and know what you can finish at what time. And also don't be too hard on yourself if you mess up on one thing or one assignment or forget something. I know it's like saying don't be too hard on yourself isn't gonna stop you from being too hard on yourself. But um, I like to think of myself as like, what would Ife in a week be like, or like Ife in a month? Like by then she's not gonna have like all of this to worry about, she'll be okay. So I think of the future Ife and that's what kind of like de-stresses me a little. And I also find a productive way to procrastinate because there's some assignments that like, you know you have to get it done, but it's just not happening, right? So I crochet and I'm like, I didn't just spend like an hour like on my bed doing nothing. I have like half a blanket done or something. So like it makes me feel good or like that's when my room is clean. If, if my room is clean, it means I'm avoiding schoolwork. So I try and like procrastinate productively. So there's less guilt in like self-loathing for like not getting stuff done. Janique, go ahead, jump on in. Yeah, so like I said, I have a dual major um, and I'm a Spanish minor. Um, so I'm all, both of my majors are very heavily paper-based. So like my friends will come in my room and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm writing a paper. Like I'm always writing papers. Um, and I'm really involved on campus. Like I'm a Lion Ambassador. I'm director of membership for Lion Ambassadors. I work 12 hours a week. So like it's a lot of moving parts and I'm taking 21 credits. Um, but what helps me is, and everybody, every time I tell people I'm taking 21 credits and all this, they're like, are you kidding me? Are you psycho? And I'm like, yes, exactly. <laughs> but um, what helps me is I've begun to, and especially because, and Ife highlighted this, so for my situation, my, my world campus classes are not all the same political science professor because there's so many professors for each of the um, classes. So I have like 50 different professors and I'm gonna have like 50 more different professors by the time I graduate. Um, but what helps me is Sunday looking at like my calendar on Canvas and I have a planner. I have one of the big like eight by 11 like paper size planners and I write down all my assignments for the week. Um, and as I get through them, I cross them off of course. Um, but something that's very important that helps you a lot with handling stress, um, and I feel like as college kids, we often overlook this, is um, mental health. So making sure that you go, we have a school counselor um, that comes with your Penn State tuition. We actually have two now. Um, and it's so important, even if you have a therapist at home, to have those check-ins every week, um, just because it's so easy to sink into this deep depression that you won't be able to get out of as a college student because that happened to me my freshman year. Um, seasonal depression hit really hard um, around that February time. It was just really rough. I was homesick, things like that. And I was greatly slacking on my work. Um, and this year I was like, I'm not going to deal with that. Um, so I started seeing you know, a counselor every week. So it's really important for you to get that um, part and get that mental health reboot that you need um, just because you can't be a good student if mentally you're just not doing well and allowing yourself to take those breaks you know like if you feel like you're in the rut and you cannot get work done because mentally like it's been an awful week that's something that I love about the professors at Berks is that a lot of my professors are the most understanding people ever and especially with everything going on like I've emailed my professors like, hey, it's been a really rough week. Can I please get an extension or can I get partial credit? And most times, as long as you let them know well in advance or like, you know, you're not emailing them at like 2 a.m. before it's due, they're very understanding. Um, so yeah, those are probably the tips that I would give. 
Thank you, Janiki. Yeah, mental health is definitely a, a big thing that we do need to have our own mental checkups and making sure that we, we are being the best person that we can be um, because of our mental health and, and knowing when to ask for help and, and get that help. Um, Allison, you did have some things that you wanted to add as well. So go right ahead. So going based um, off of what you said about reaching out for help, I find that a lot of times I think of myself as like some superhuman that can understand everything, has to understand everything. And I sometimes find it really hard to like when I have when I'm having an overwhelming week to just be like to my professor or going to the learning center and just saying, hey, I don't have time for me to figure out all of uh, I have to figure out. Could you please help me out? to how do I do this? How should I approach this? And I think reaching out for help is one of the main things, even reaching out for help for help um, with your mental health a lot of times, because sometimes we wanna say, I wanna get everything done within this deadline. And sometimes we miss it. And sometimes instead of saying, okay, I can just keep it going and saying, okay, let me take a step back. Let me relax a little bit and let me reach out for help to see if I can get this done with others. We just say, no, I can do it by myself. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I can keep going. But we don't realize that if we just ask or if we just say, hey, could you help me out with this? Or, hey, I'm having a really stressful week. Could we hang out and maybe talk about it? Like, that's very important for handling the stress of college. Excellent advice. Okay, so I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, and depending on the timing of everything, um, this may be the last question or we might have time for one more. I'm going to have each of you give us your selling pitch for your major, your four-year degree that is get can be completed at Penn State Berks. Why is your major so amazing here at Penn State Berks? Um, I'll give you a, a minute or so to kind of think about that. And then Janique, you're going to be the first one up. So you just give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Um, I would say the one that can be completed, you can talk about the one that can be completed here at Berks. Sounds good. Um, so my other major, which is a digital media and professional writing major. Um, I mean, my selling pitch was the internships, um, something that Penn State very much values and actually like puts within your academic plan, which a lot of schools sometimes don't do, they expect you to do it on your own, is internship. Um, and they have, because Penn State is Penn State, they have amazing connections for you to get these spectacular internships before the time you graduate. Like for me, for example, one of them is the local news station, which a lot of people wouldn't even get that opportunity, like just being able to do that on their own. Um, so that's something that definitely sold me when I saw the internships and the opportunities that we have and the resources on campus, like all those things combined and honestly like the networking like everyone knows what Penn State is everyone knows a family member who graduated from Penn State literally my freshman year but the summer before my freshman year we went to Ocean City Maryland and my mom had like the Penn State bumper sticker because my family are big Rutgers and Michigan State people but now that I'm at Penn State now everybody's a Penn State fan it's a little fake but it's okay <laughs> um but we had a Penn State bumper sticker and I'm going into like a crab shack in Ocean City Maryland because what else do you do in Ocean City other than eat crabs and somebody was like we are and I was like huh like what like I didn't know what to do but like everyone knows what Penn State is and that's the amazing thing so definitely for me the internships and just it being such a well-known name that that definitely sold me so Thanks, Janique. Tyler, so kinesiology, right? Yes, uh, kinesiology. So personally, like, um, so I know Allison's bio, uh, biology, but I, so I love the body, but I am a lot more inclined to sports. So growing up as a kid, it's everybody's dream to be a professional athlete and, you know, be on top of the world and all that stuff. And then you grow up and then you're like, wow, I am not LeBron James. I am not this person. So you, so I was always fascinated with the body. So kinesiology was more sports oriented. So of course that always dragged me toward um, that in specific, but I'd like to talk a lot like more in specific about Burks. 
Um, what made me come to this, like this major in specific are genuinely the professors. Um, the first professor I talked to, um, he is the like the leader of my major, Dr. Ben. Um, he's always extremely understanding. Him and I have been in his office for uh, countless times. Just he, honestly, we both vent to each other and it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, all of my professors are so well equipped at being so adaptive to people's teaching styles. So I'm very hands-on and I like things explained to me a thousand times because I'm really good at memorization. So there are professors that are exactly like that. And then there are professors that can tailor to any other teaching style. So I think honestly, the faculty is what has really set themselves apart um, for my major. Thank you, Tyler and Adam. All right, so I am a hospitality management major. In hotels and restaurants, we get to deal with a lot of different people. And the staff really, in a, in, for those of you who aren't familiar uh, with the hospitality industry, the staff really bonds through uh, shared experiences. I've heard it a million times that I work in a restaurant and it kind of sucks, but you know, I can come home with 50 million stories and I do have 50 million stories and I really bond with the people who I work with. And that same thing transfers over to my major. I, it's a, it's a small program here at Berks, but I know everyone in my classes. I know, I see people, oh, I'm taking this one hospitality course with this one person. And then we'll take the exact same course like another time or like the same semester or like even the same day. Um, and again, the professors are like, well, there's only three of them. So we get to have that close connection with them, that really, really close connection with them. Um, and they're very encouraging. Like I think I said to one of my professors how I was interested in studying abroad and she connected me. She took the time to personally connect me to the person at U Park who deals with hospitality studying abroad. And it's just that close knit community that we have in our major uh, that really makes it worth it to stay there all four years. Um, and not only not only that, but also outside of the four years, um, people are very willing to use those connections that they have um, in order to gain you jobs and internships and opportunities uh, just by going to Penn State and knowing people in the major. So, yeah. Thank you, Adam. Ife. So I think we can all agree that Berks has great um, opportunities, great professors, but I'm gonna tell you that the Global Studies program at Berks is the only one in the Penn State system. UP has like a global and international studies program that isn't as cool as ours because they don't require an internship and they don't require study abroad, but the one at Berks does. And that's because we're really hands-on. Um, there's a lot of support from our faculty. They're really knowledgeable. They're, they've won awards. They're well-published, I guess, like basically a lot of faculty on at Berks, but um, our program is specifically unique. So come to global studies, we're pretty small. So you get like a lot of attention. Um, there's no like, that much competition for like internships and job opportunities. So global studies. Kiwi Faye and Allison. So my selling pitch for biochemistry and the molecular biology department, I would have to say the labs, hands down favorite part of the entire major. They really like, you'll spend time in lecture and this is the first thing I always think when I'm learning about new things is, when am I gonna apply this? When am I gonna use this? And the faculty here at Berks really make sure that you're applying it in lab. They, so this week we're writing lab reports for my first like real 400 level lab. And my professor was like, we're writing big girl and big boy um, lab reports. We are making sure you're writing like scientists because we wanna make sure that you come out of Penn State Berks prepared to write, um, research papers and, you know, get those jobs because it's very, a very important skill. And I feel like they really do know their stuff and they really know how to implement it in the classroom. And they're also all very supportive. They're all very understanding that we're college students and our material can sometimes 
times to be difficult. So they always make the time to make sure if you need help outside of class, they will make sure you get that help outside of class. So I think that's like highlights of Thank you, Allison and Sammy. Um, so as I said, I'm elementary education. And one of the awesome things about my major is my professors, since they are teaching us to be one day teachers and teaching the youth, um, the things that they teach us to do with our students, they do with us. So to kind of give a little bit of an example, as, as a teacher, one of the things I'm going to have to make sure to do is that I understand my students are okay in school as well as out of school. So one of the awesome things that I love about my professors that has happened in every single major class I've had so far is they will take days to literally just have a wellness break where they will just talk to us about what's happening, what can they do better, um, is it too much? Is it too little? Can she push more? Can she not? Um, I said she because I think about Dr. Shocker right away. Um, in ed psych, she would literally take days, get a stool and just sit there and be like, what's up, guys? Tell me. And we would just tell her everything, every little thing. And from that, she would take it and be like, OK, here's how I'm going to change the course here. I'm going to change the syllabus to make you guys happier. And we just did that last Friday in my math class as well, where my professor Tijo took a whole day to talk to us um, about things that were bothering him as well in life. And it was amazing. And I'm seeing that as a common theme. So them doing that kind of shows me, okay, I have to do this as a teacher. But the professors, every single professor I've encountered so far with elementary ed has been phenomenal in being there for us and stuff. And again, that was one of those things where I like sit there and I'm like, how am I supposed to go to University Park and leave these amazing humans? So, um, but yeah, I, I love that. That's one of my favorite things about my major, just how much they care. They take that extra step to understand how are you doing outside of, of campus, not just on campus. And it's awesome. Thank you all so, so much. And I, now I'm going to turn it over to our audience. If our audience has any members for even just one particular person on the panel, please just write it in the q and I'll give you a couple of minutes to do so. Um, we're happy to address any questions or concerns you have, or if you had questions about um, anything you heard today, or if we didn't touch on anything that you would you just have questions about, please just put those in the Q&A. And if we don't have any questions, I do have one final one that you don't all have to answer just because I know we're getting close on time. Um, the question is, if you have advice for any first year student, what would it be? Any first year student, whether they're thinking about majors or they're thinking about, or maybe even think about things you yourself as a first year student, what you would have done differently. Um, what advice you would have given yourself even. Um, and when you're ready, just raise your hand and I will call on you. Janique. Um, short answer is it'll all work out. Um, in high school, you know, we always get told, oh, college professors won't let you get away with that. Or like, you'll see college professors can be some of the most chill people who are just like, eh, okay, you can come to class if you want. Like, you know, but like in high school, especially um, in like American schools and things like that, it's very forced down our throats that college is going to be this big and bad, scary world. Um, and that you have to basically know what you're going to do with the rest of your life by the time that you're 18 years old. Um, and that's not true at all. There are people who change their majors so many times. Um, and it's, it's okay because you go through the journey at your own pace. Um, so yeah, that it'll all work out and that whatever is supposed to happen for you will happen for you. That was an awesome answer. Anyone else? Tyler. So um, firstly, to go off of what Janique said, um, yeah, pr professors are not these big bad people who want you to fail. Um, I have numerous times um, emailed professors and they've responded in emojis. Um, you know, it's it's not far fetched that that happens on a daily basis. So, um, yeah, don't. So first, don't take college super. You know, like it's not this big scary place. It's it's where you grow as a person. Um, 
arguably I so I didn't even like high school that much. I actually love college like by far and away more than anything else. Uh, this period of my life is probably the most prosperous. So, um, you know, having that being said, um, also to any first year student who comes to college, really just make the most out of it. Because I can tell you now, if I didn't get involved um, to the degree that I did, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be talking to all of you, first of all, and I wouldn't be uh, where I am today and how I've grown as a person, I can see tenfold. So um, yeah, I just, it, it, is, it is a very scary process at first and it's very, you know, gloomy, but um, once you get into it, there's, there's no, no worries about it anymore. Thanks, Tyler. Anyone else? Oh my goodness, everybody. Okay, let's go Ife, Allison, Adam, okay? Um, I just want to say for your classes, um, one way thing that has helped me with like doing well in classes is picking classes that I care about, especially with gen ed. So like if you care about art, like painting, um, don't go take like the history class, like take the art class, the painting class, um, take classes that are closer to things that you're going to care about because it makes it easier to study um, and to do well in that class. So that's just I wish I'd known some things, some of the genets, I wouldn't have taken them. Yeah. <laughs> um, mine would have to be, be the best you that you can be. It sounds corny, I know, but um, a lot of times, I, I'm, at least me personally in, in my freshman year, I found myself comparing myself to my peers. Like if I got a 92 and somebody got a 93, I'd feel bad. I was like, what did I do wrong? Like why did I not put in as much time as they did? If I saw somebody in the library spend from six o'clock to 12 o'clock and I'd be like six to seven, I'd be like, oh, I didn't study enough. It's really important to realize that everyone's different. Everybody works a different way. And if you focus more on yourself than what others are doing, you're gonna have a much easier time getting through college and enjoying it actually as you're going through it. So that'd be my piece of advice. Thank you, Allison. Adam. Uh, if I had advice to give, I would have to say um, to get involved in things and don't be afraid to try new things. In high school, I didn't really take the opportunity to do that. In college, I did the direct opposite and it actually paid off uh, because I tried a little bit of everything within reason. I'm not saying overload yourself with time management, but getting involved and just finding different things that you like and things you don't like is really beneficial. Um, I know some people who like take a class or take a club and they actually change their major because they liked it so much. Um, but yeah, just getting involved can really help you not only meet amazing people, but also make those connections to things you like and learn more about yourself and about others through these different classes and clubs and everything. Thank you all. It looks like we are just about out of time. And I just want to say how much I appreciate all of you. Um, as you all know, you are very special to me. Um, and I, I want to thank you all for participating in this panel. And thank you to um, our attendees for attending this um, Lionside chat. I'm so glad that you were here today. Um, and Again, my name is Becky Eckenrode. I am the Associate Director of Admissions. Should you have any questions at any time, please feel free um, to look me up on our website and I am happy um, to get in touch with you and talk to you possibly about getting you in touch with anybody if you are interested in doing a four-year degree at Penn State Berks. And student panelists, thank you all so much. What a phenomenal presentation. Um, I really enjoyed getting to hear each of your stories and how your college story found the right setting right here at Penn State Berks. So thank you so much. Thank you to our audience members for also joining us today. As you click out of our webinar, you're gonna have access um, to a survey. Please take a few minutes so that we can provide that feedback to our panelists from today. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us via email. We're more than happy to help you get the information that you're looking for. We do have some additional chats coming up and that is coming up in a moment here. 
And our next one will be coming up on the 19th, which is We Are Professional, and then followed by We Are Healthy. So make sure you come back soon to meet with another faculty, staff, or students uh, here from our campus. And stay safe, Berks, and beyond. Signing off until next time. This has been the Penn State Berks Lion Side Chat. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe.